I just got 300 feet. That's insane. Manuals are super hard. I have been struggling with manuals for just about two years now, and if you're like me, I pretty much wrote them off as something I would just never be able to learn. Some people are good at them, and I just wasn't one. But very recently, like a month ago, things clicked, and I'm now manualing 100 plus feet extremely consistently. The cool thing about all this is, I journaled the past two years while I practiced and noted the key things that helped me unlock the manual. And after reading through those journalings and watching old videos of myself, I was able to boil my unexpected success with manuals into five very important factors. So in this video, we'll quickly cover how to initiate a manual, but for the most part, we're gonna talk about those five key things that took me from a total novice of like two years to a person who gets upset when I do anything less than 200 feet. Before we jump into that good stuff though, let's cover the kind of nuts and bolts of how to get into a manual first. Steps for initiating a manual generally go as follows. Step one is a downward compression of your bike. Step two would be extending your hips, arms, and legs straight back, which will initiate the pop. Step three is generally everything that follows to keep you in a manual, like keeping your hips low and moving them forward or back to counter falling. Keep your eyes looking ahead, not down. Steer the bike from side to side using your knees and or the handlebars. And the last or first tip that most people generally say is to practice looping out or grabbing your brake for when you go too far back. My only advice here is to not necessarily practice looping out, but rather experiment to see how far back you can take your bike without looping out. Because if you train your body to jump off the bike at any signs of discomfort, you're gonna have a hard time finding that balance point. Now, I can't stress enough how vital it is for you to get good at initiating the manual because this is this is your base. This is what it all stems off of. Getting good at this part should be step number one. Not holding the manual, but just getting a good pop-up where things feel somewhat balanced. That said, I feel like this part is kind of just the tip of the iceberg. Manuals are extremely complex, but I think after you hear the five breakthroughs I had, you'll be better able to visualize the full scope of a manual, which in turn will put you in a better position to learn them. So let's get into breakthrough number one. I'm calling this one nature versus nurture or why consistency matters. There are people out there that are just naturally better at things, right? But I don't think that's because of some gene in their body that makes them better. They're just better equipped to learn certain skills. Whether that's learning to shoot a basketball, do trust calculations, or hold a manual. But the takeaway here is that it still comes down to learning, which we can all do. You just might need more time and that's okay. People are different and we learn at different paces. But once you get the hang of something, suddenly it becomes just as easy for you to do as it does for the person naturally good at it. The only difference here is you have to nurture your skill. You have to get out there every day and practice consistently. I'll say this right now, if you're only practicing manuals once a week, you're not gonna learn how to manual if you haven't already. At this beginning stage, you gotta practice at least every other day. And I say this with certainty because I was in this boat for the last two years of just not giving manuals enough consistent practice. Once I gave it consistency, suddenly I was breaking personal goals every practice. Okay, breakthrough number two, and this is a giant one. There is no balance point. No matter how good you are, you have to constantly move your body around to counter your bike's extreme desire to fall. Now the extremely valuable result you get from thinking about manuals this way is you're realizing you're not searching for a balance point. You're actually trying to get extremely good at predicting the falling path of your bike. The better you are at knowing how your bike wants to fall, the easier it will be for you to correct the falling before it happens. With this knowledge, you can then start to work on getting your bike to be unbalanced in a way that is more predictable to you. You're trying to correct things before they happen, so if you get your bike falling in a more predictable manner, then you're probably going to get better at correcting it. If we take that idea of choosing which way to make your bike fall, I tend to choose making the bike fall forward because it has one main way to correct it, which is shifting your hips back and pumping your legs. So I know exactly what to do when it's happening and if I fail at correcting it, the front wheel just goes down. There's no fear of looping out unless I overcorrect. But 
Don't take my word for this. Choose which way you prefer. Find out which one you are better at correcting. If you're better with the brake modulation, then let your bike lean back more and correct with the brake. And of course, it's not as simple as just choosing which way to fall, especially if you're just starting out. You need to figure out what point your bike switches from falling forward to falling backward. And to find that out, you're gonna have to do a lot of falling forward and backwards. Your body doesn't know how to react to that. So when you first start out, it helps to think of this process as gathering numbers so you can later average them. This may seem like a weird way to think about it, but I like it for one reason. It causes you to view each failure to hold a manual as something extremely vital. Because each time you fail, you're getting another number for an accurate average. So pay attention to each failure because each failure will teach you how not to fall. This brings me to breakthrough number three. 50% of a manual is dictated by your mental state. If you're pulling up into a manual and thinking that you're gonna screw it up, the likelihood is extremely high that you're going to screw it up. But if you do it with the vision of being a manualing god, the likelihood is you're gonna impress yourself with how long you can hold the manual for. This is why viewing the failure to hold your bike up as a vital part of learning manuals is so important. It keeps your mental state in a good place, which is where it needs to be in order for you to execute a good manual. On top of this, you need to be really focused and engaged with what you're doing. Holding a bike up on one wheel is not something you're going to do without the full attention of your brain, especially in the early stages of practice. Your body does not have the automatic movements yet. You have to literally be one with your bike. You need to feel the tire on the road, the frame moving underneath you, the pedals under your feet, really focus on everything that your body is feeling. Once your body gets familiar with those sensations and you begin to master the manual, then you won't have to think about it as much. But one quote comes to mind here heavily that I think will kind of put this in perspective. You need to see feelingly. What I mean by that is the only thing that your eyes should be doing is making sure you're not running into anything. The rest is up to your body and your brain. Breakthrough number four is one I specifically had a lot of trouble with. That is how to stop from side to side falling. On one particular practice, I had my buddy Dave come out and watch me practice. He sat watching me for some time and then noted two things that really broke ground when it came to falling from side to side. He said when he watched the pros doing manuals, they always had their heels down and their knees out. After he told me this, I went into my next manual thinking about those two things, and I promise you, it was like night and day. Suddenly the bike was much easier to keep in a straight path, and I was better able to steer with my knees when I started to fall from side to side. You don't even have to be manualing to see why this would help. If you sit down at a chair or a bench like this and you push your feet out, try to wiggle your knees in and out and watch what it does to the bottom of your feet. You can't you can't keep your feet planted to the ground. They just flop around like this. But if you pull your feet in and keep your heels down, now if we move our knees, you'll see that the feet stay planted to the ground. And it keeps my weight pushing down through my heels, which also keeps my, my feet planted. So now you can see why if you've got your toes pointed out and your heels up, everything you do with your knees is going to affect how your feet are sitting on those pedals, which is in turn going to screw with the balance of your bike. But if you keep those heels down, you can do anything you want with your knees without affecting how your feet are planted on the pedals. So if you're having trouble with side to side falling, try to keep your heels down and I think you'll find a lot of success there. But also remember, keep your knees out because that kind of gives you like a little bit of a balance. There's a teetering effect. I'm not really sure why that's such a big help, but really thinking about keeping your knees out, it's a big help. I, I almost think it's like a placebo thing where when you're actively thinking about moving your knees, then you tend to move your knees more, which is what needs to happen. If those two things don't help enough though, there is one last thing you can do that will definitely help. And that leads us to the final breakthrough I had, which is number five. Speed is everything. Speed matters for every part of the manual, but the quickest way for me to show you why it matters so much for side to side falling is best done with a very simple demonstration. If I take the exact same wheel that I'm trying to balance on and roll it slowly across my yard, watch what happens. 
Yep, it falls right to the side as expected. Now, if I take it and roll it quickly, you'll notice it goes perfectly straight with zero help needed. Now, if you roll the wheel at an angle slowly, it of course falls right to the side. But if we roll it fast and at an angle, the wheel will actually correct itself from the forward momentum. This means if you're going fast, not only will you have less side to side falling to deal with, but when you initiate the manual, you won't have to be as perfectly straight either because things will somewhat correct themselves. Pretty freaking cool. One last thing we can note from this is the importance of practicing on a downslope, because even if I toss the wheel at a slower speed, the slope allows it to gain speed, so you still get the benefits even though you start slow. Now the other huge thing that I noticed with going faster is that it felt like I was afforded more time to correct falling before it happened. Like I could actually feel the bike leaning a certain way and correct it with my legs or hips or whatever needed to happen, before it happened. It was actually manageable. Like when I would go slower, it seemed like I was always one step behind the bike. Like I couldn't actually react fast enough to correct what was happening. But like I said, at higher speeds, I could suddenly use my hips, legs, and even steer the bike with my handlebars to keep it in a straight line. Now you might think that's all good and well, but when you're going slower, you won't be able to manual. But that's not the case. You actually learn better how to manual at faster speeds because you get to experience what it feels like to actually correct the bike. So your body develops those subconscious automatic responses that you need when you're going at slower speeds. Because when you're going at slower speeds, your conscious mind may not be able to react fast enough. Now I know that was a lot, so let's quickly put all of those points together. Number one was practice consistently, at least every other day. Number two was there is no balance point. You need to accept that you'll have to constantly be moving while you're in a manual, so figure out which direction you're best at correcting for. Number three was keeping a good mindset. Always make sure you're in a good mood when you're practicing. If it's not fun, maybe take a break and come back the next day. Number four was heels down, knees out. Pretty self-explanatory, just keep this in your pocket for correcting that side-to-side -side falling. Number five, and arguably the most important, speed is everything. Once you've got initiating the manual down, I highly recommend upping your speed to see maximum progress. Now, if you're having trouble initiating the manual, check out Ryan Leach Connection. It's an online mountain biking site. They're not paying me to say this, but it's absolutely awesome when it comes to learning the manual or any other skill for that matter. And it's what I use to learn how to initiate the manual, so I can definitely vouch for it. Also, I wanna address that you can learn manuals on any bike. The only difference I notice when practicing on a full-size trail bike that's a 29er versus my slope style bike was the initiating of the manual took more energy out of me. Other than that, holding the manual felt the exact same, if not <laughs> arguably easier on the larger bike. But I still would recommend a smaller bike like the Trid or Trid ZZ because you'll be able to practice for longer amounts of time since you're not using as much energy. You can check out my bike in the description below. Otherwise, I hope all the things that helped me learn manuals helps you now. I'm telling you right now, if, if I got to, to manually 300 feet, you can also get to manually 300 feet. I promise you that. I am a terrible rider and this took me forever. But if you just stay consistent and do like all the, do all those things that I was talking about, those breakthroughs that I had, I'm telling you, man, you can learn it. You can freaking learn it. If I learned it, you can definitely learn it. Get out there, practice, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.